On Wednesday, December 13th, 2023, Jenkins LTS version 2.426.2 was released. On today's show, we're going to be taking a look at the changes that happened in that release. And along with me, as always, I have Mark Wade on today. Mark, how are you doing? Just great, Darren. How are you? Good. Good to see you. It's uh, that holiday season. We're all getting everything ready to go, everything wrapped. Have you started your shopping yet? I, I, I have not, but it is the holiday season, and I've had snow in Colorado, and it's been a real winter, so it's... It, you know what? It feels like, okay, It's not the snow's not particularly heavy right now, but it's feeling like it's December. I was speaking with one of our co-workers here at Cloud Bees today, and she lives northern Canada. Oh, yes. Do you want to know how warm it is today? Oh, no. I, I, I hesitate to guess. So minus well, 5, minus 10? Uh, no. It's the same there as it is here in North Carolina. Oh. It's 51 degrees. Uh, and that's Fahrenheit. So That's so Fahrenheit. Talking, so it was 11 degrees talking, Celsius. Oh, yeah. That's great. So they were thinking not so much a white Christmas, but maybe a brown Christmas this year. Right. We'll see how it goes. Or or they could get pounded by snow in two or three days. And uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, I'm glad I'm not in the snow. I mm. prefer no snow. I like seeing it. I don't mm. like driving in it. But that's not why we're here today. Nope. We are here to talk about the latest LTS that came out yesterday at the time we were recording this. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, a very quiet one. And you'll see that once we get into the notes. But Mark, for people that have never worked with Jenkins LTS before, they're hearing LTS, you know, what is this concept that we're talking about? Sure, so Jenkins releases every week. We've got a nice clock that builds and delivers a new version of Jenkins, increments by one every week. But every 12 weeks, we choose a baseline. And that 12 weeks of baseline then is used as the start of a long-term support release. We backport some fixes to that baseline, and after a little bit, release dot one. So 2.426.1 is the first of the baseline. Four weeks later, we deliver another iteration of that baseline, dot two, with usually a relatively few backported fixes for things that might not have been perfect in dot one. And then four weeks after that, we release a dot three. And that concludes the 12 week cycle and we start it again. And that happens like clockwork, 12 weeks, 12 weeks, 12 weeks. Oh, except when it doesn't. I was muted, of course. <laughs> okay, yes, right. You should have told me that because I, I just started talking. Anyway, we'll talk more about maybe not 12 weeks this time. So right, right. Good point. We'll talk to them about that. Let's take a look at the release notes for this release. So let me go ahead and get that sharing here. Okay. If you never looked at the release notes before, here's how you do it. Jenkins, go to download. Download. Thank you. And then... There's change logs for both weekly and for stable or LTS. That's what we want. So we'll go to change log. And we're taking a look at 426.2. Um, really? Just two? Yeah, just two. That's right. Only two. How are we going to make this actually stretch out for more than we're not. 30 seconds? Okay. We are not going to stretch this. Okay, good. Uh, warn users at 12 months prior to the end of Java support and again at three months prior to the end of the Java support. I think a different blog post will make more sense for this. Are you ready for Because I want to overlay this with, let's go to the blog real quick. Okay. And here's the reason why I want to go to the blog. Back in November, the introduction of the 2 plus 2 plus 2 plan came into play. Right. So let's overlay what this is. Warn users at 12 months prior to the end of Java support and again at three months. Right. So what does that look like? And let's get to the accepted proposal right, right here. What does that mean in this case? Yeah, so what it means is October of 2024, Java 11 will reach end of life for the Jenkins project. And right. we want users who are running Java 11 today to know that 12 months from now, they're gonna be on a platform that we don't support anymore. And so this is our way of saying, look, 
12 months from 12 months from now java 11 support will end you should start your planning now to get off java 11 to get onto java 17 because we know that some people have a longer upgrade cycle than than others so you said 17 there mm -hmm. since the current lts's as in what shipped yesterday right supports java 21 if you could go ahead and go to java 21 should you you sure can and and i i have been very pleased i'm running java 21 myself and you mm -hmm. certainly can go to java 21 and and you might say hey i like that because then you can get on this nice cadence of every two years or so you'll roll to the next major java version now for some people jumping from 11 to 21 is a bigger jump than they're ready to make they may say i've got to stop i've got to do a, a one at a time i'm going to do 11 to 17 then on to 21 but certainly you are welcome to go to 21 it's working great for me it's working great for many many users and i'm also one of those ones but i'm still waiting for one platform to ship 21. which I'll platform give you is that raspberry pi Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, so so Timurin has not shipped a twenty-one yet. They've not shipped a thirty-two bit, a thirty-two bit Java. They haven't shipped a twenty-one at all for any ARM-based. Oh, interesting. 21s. Okay, I wasn't aware so, of that. Minor. So thing. okay, well, That's and okay. and your minor thing fits my minor thing. I'm I'm still waiting for the FreeBSD project to support Java twenty-one. Right. Again, there are some places that don't have Java twenty-one that do have Java seventeen. Exactly. So if you have the opportunity, if you're running Jenkins LTS today, or even Jenkins Weekly, if you're, if you're mm -hmm. that brave um, in production, I'll put it that way. You can run it all the time. And you could feel like you can get to 21, there's no reason to not do that. Correct. But if you feel, eh, it's still too new, go to 17. 17's been baking for now how long? Two yeah, years so, already? Wait, so we're, we're on dot nine. Yeah. And dot nine means nine quarters, so we're over oh. two years on Java 17. Yeah, so you got time. Okay, anyway. So how does that map back to this? Well, right now you're going to start seeing warnings for the Java support. Right. But then it's going to pop up again. Even if I've dismissed it, it's going to pop up again. Right. We're, we're really trying to be serious about this, right? Because this, this particular transition is especially important because when we reach October of 2024, that's the point where one or more of the Java vendors stop supporting it. So when we talk about two plus two plus two, there's a point where Jenkins no longer supports it, but when the Java vendors stop supporting it, it means you get no more security fixes. And so no, no October of 2024 is very important to be off of Java 11 before the end of October. Okay. So we'll move on from that one. So this is actually the first time I've actually seen this before. Is this the first warning or administrative monitor that has the ability to come back to life? Uh, it's, 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 this is certainly a, a different style, type of administrative monitor. I don't know if we've ever done a bring it back to life. I think this, may, you may be right, it may be the first. It's certainly a nice portable implementation because it's reusable for Java 21 for eventually Java 25, et cetera. So, so we, we like, it's a very nice generalized solution. Okay. Now the second item, add support for Unix domain sockets. Uh -huh. What is Unix domain sockets? Yeah, so Unix domain sockets are a, allow you to use the Berkeley sockets programming interface on a local system with effectively local file system style, so local interprocess communication. And a domain socket in that case means there's no way it can escape onto the network because it's entirely inside that local system. So why do I care? Well, what's so the purpose? If you're, if you're a reverse proxy user, if you're configuring a reverse proxy, you might say, why do I need to, if the, if the Jenkins controller and the HTTP front end, so Nginx, Apache, whatever, are both on the same computer, why do I need a network connection between the two? And a Unix domain socket would say, let you say, I'm going to avoid allocating a network port for that. I'm just going to use a Unix domain socket. Oh, okay. But that's only good if I'm running that reverse proxy on the same machine 
right. as that. Okay. Right, because at least okay. And now my my flawed comprehension of Unix domain socket says there's probably some way to do, but the as I understand it, the goal is. Unix domain sockets keep you inside that one system, and and therefore you haven't allocated a network port. You have no risk of network traffic on it. It's interprocess communication with a Berkeley sockets protocol inside that Unix computer. Interesting. So if I was using some sort of reverse proxy to, to SSL termination, which is I could what have I my, do, yep. right? Have my network up to that point. Right. But then the backside of that proxy to the front side of Jenkins, instead of now that being a network. Instead of doing the typical, like, because I'm using Caddy, so I'd say whatever to, to the front side of Caddy and the back side of or inside of Caddy, I'm saying reverse proxy Jenkins colon eighty eighty. Exactly. What that does is gets rid of that colon eighty eighty, and then That's I'm just right. using UDS. Okay. Jenkins is no longer listening on port eighty eighty. It's now listening on a Unix domain socket, and and that absolutely assures nothing can can use eighty eighty as a way into that. And that's a good thing. It is. It's it's a it's an elegant piece of work for people who are sophisticated users of Unix Unix systems, Unix and Unix like systems. Yeah. And even though all of our contributors to Jenkins are super smart, they didn't do this. No, no. This this came in through Winstone. It, it, well, well, Winstone right? Winstone is fundamentally a Jen Jenkins component. So true. But but it came from a contributor who is not a typical contributor. So it, this was right. not from, from the people who are doing regular maintenance on core. This was somebody who had a, had a problem that they wanted to solve for themselves and they solved it by submitting a pull request to open source software. And now we've got pull requests pending or we've got action items pending to update the documentation for the, our reverse proxy configuration pages to show people you could alternately use this technique. So it's it's a very nice piece of work that the the user did. I'll look forward to seeing that updated documentation. Yeah, it may be a while. I, I haven't touched uh, that reverse proxy configuration is a point of some pride that it works at all. I, I consider that it's it's interestingly complex. So that's it for this release. That's it. Now we were talking about the twelve week cycles that are typical. Mm -hmm. the keyword being there, typical. We're getting ready to go into an atypical time where time is suspended. Actually, time will continue, but everything else suspends around it. So tell us about what's happening in the community over the next few weeks. Yeah, so, so one of the things that the Jenkins Project does and has done for many years is we like to take a two-week break at the end of each calendar year. It's good for our contributors. It's good for us to have some time off. And so we take a two week break. And so what that means is we released dot one uh, four weeks ago. We released dot two two days ago. Now we're gonna skip two weeks and we will release dot three six weeks from now instead of four weeks from now. So the next the next release date should be January twenty four mm -hmm. instead of early January. And we've already scheduled this show to happen on January twenty fifth at the same time. So six weeks from today, we'll be back talking about the dot three. Very interesting. Um, are you willing to take a question here from sure. Ari real quick? Okay, sure. let's, let's see how it goes. How is the plugins Java support handled for core plugins and potentially third-party ones when the specific Java version support is removed? Good question. Okay, so let's, let's talk through what, what happened with the transition to Java 11, right? So, so the way it works is we had a Jenkins release, I'm going to give specific numbers, 2.346, that was the last version to support Java 8. And it supports Java 8. So it also supported Java 11 as an allowed version. The next LTS, 2.361, dropped Java 8. So Java 8 could no longer be used to execute the Jenkins controller. However, there were relatively few plugins that needed any change for that transition. Plugins could still be have been built with Java 8 and be executed by Java 11 based Jenkins 2.361. Same thing we expect will happen again is that we'll upgrade the minimum required Java version for Jenkins. It will now require 
in October of 2024, Java 17 as minimum. But the plugins will continue to execute because thankfully Java 17 is quite happy to execute Java 8 bytecode. Ari, right, hopefully that helps. That's, that's good. Well, it's not like we had in years past, we didn't go through the, how do I say it politely? Um, we, we've been getting a lot more standard JDK releases over the past 10 years than what it felt like we were getting in the prior years. Right. Java, J the pace of Java development has accelerated. And they've Correct. intentionally accelerated it, right? So, yeah. so we didn't have to confront this nearly as frequently as in the past, or in the past. Java 7 to Java 8 was, was a long time. And Java 8 to Java 11 was a really long time. Really long time. So, so yes, but we're getting on to a nice orderly cadence now of new Java LTS every two years. And, and this is a pattern. Now, yeah. that doesn't mean that we don't want plugins to update to be able to use the most recent Java features. So plugins can choose, and we hope often do, and most of the popular plugins have already made the transition so that they are building with Java 11 byte code now. And, well, let me, and, go ahead. I, I've got an idea, well, not an idea, but uh, during part of the day job, mm -hmm. we were discussing, I, I jumped in because something came up about Jota time, right? And Jota time was a big deal back in the Java 6 days because you didn't want to work with calendars in Java 6. Well, because Java just didn't have really good time APIs yeah. and Jota time filled that gap, right? Especially right. Until, Java 6 and 7. It really filled the gap in Java, in Java time APIs. Yeah. Right. But then Java 8 solved that. Mm -hmm. And it's really solved in 11 and super really solved in 17. Yep. But yet... Many plugins, because of their age and history, still have dependencies on Jota time. Well, and, and it's, it's fun. It's age and de so dependencies is a fun one because yeah. if I use a library that's a mature, stable library, it might, on of its own, have Jota time. Exactly. Right. Yep. And, and again, there's this transitive dependencies, which gets even stranger. But again, if you are much like how the Jenkins project is doing today, keeping up with the two plus two plus twos, then it would be very nice to be able to eliminate Jota time from the stack completely. Right. Right. And that, that, that would be perfect, but uh, we don't live in a perfect world. Well, it's, it's kind of cool that that means the plugin maintainer has the option to, oh, I don't have to use Jota time anymore because I've got right. good time APIs in my Java 11 baseline. Right. And, and therefore they can use all the features of Java 11 they just have to then say, I'm going to require Jenkins 2.361 or newer as my minimum version. Yep. Right. So that's just one, you know, just jumped out at me because that was one of those weirds. Is, why is Jota time even still a thing? Mm -hmm. right. And the reason why is history. Yep. Okay. So that's it for today's show. So as a reminder, we'll be back here in six weeks. So the next LTS comes out here minus one. I'm trying to do, this is Darren time, right? This is, I'm trying to do date math live. Mm -hmm. And then let's see what else is going on in between now and then. Oh yeah, we have this thing called Christmas and we're finishing up this thing called Hanukkah tomorrow. Right. And there may be other holidays that other people may follow and enjoy. If you do, please do. If you're not into the holiday thing, I can sort of get you. Just be nice. Just be nice. Enjoy some time off if you can. Don't don't spend your weekends at the office doing upgrades while everybody else is off. That's that's all I'm saying. If the if the Jenkins project can take two weeks off, you can at least take off a day. Right. I like that, Darren. I like okay. that a bunch. Right. And as Michi says here, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Oh yeah, there's that New Year thing too. Or or somebody said today, Happy Christmas, and I replied with Merry New Year because I, I had to. So anyway, thanks everybody. We will see you again in six weeks. Have a great holiday season. And uh, again, be nice. That's, that's all, just, just be nice. Thanks, we'll talk to you again in six weeks.